How's it going guys? This is Bailey with Rogers Performance Marine. Today we're getting ready to send this uh, 1600 Fury home with their customer. We're going to give them a full virtual walkthrough of the inside and outside of the boat, go over a few things on the trailer and uh, both of the motors. Um, if you're looking at buying a new 1600 Fury side console or a 1400 Fury side console, a lot of what I'm showing you today is going to give you a good representation of what the new models look like. This here is a 2017, so it's got a few different upgrades and accessories that you may need to put on yourself. Um, but even the 2020 models are going to be laid out almost identical to this, um, just with a few uh, minor changes. So we're going to take a step back to the back of the boat and go over the motors first. Um, so this particular boat is uh, kind of a rarity. I haven't seen this before. Um, it does come equipped with the 40 horsepower Mercury that was ordered from the factory, uh, but they went ahead and put an eight horsepower kicker motor on the back for it. Uh, the previous owner did a lot of uh, river fishing uh, with a lot of current and wanted uh, you know, uh, to have a motor he could troll with and without burning up the uh, electric motor on the bow. Um, so we'll go over that motor here in a minute. Starting with the 40 horsepower motor, you can notice the previous customer had a transom saver installed by us. Um, highly recommended with the weight of the 40 horsepower motor, that's just gonna prolong um, the longevity of the transom for sure. Um, keeping this boat in as good as condition as possible for as long as possible. So when you're traveling down the road, you do wanna use this if you can. We're gonna take this off right now to go over a few things on the motor does have a trim switch on the port side so you don't have to climb up in the boat you can raise it then lower transom saver then lower down the motor you can trim it of course at the console or you can trim it back here with the trim switch that I'm using right now um, so we just did a fresh service on this motor uh, it's completely service oil oil filter fuel filter and it has a new impeller in it to go over the service on this um, both of these motors you're going to want to have serviced once a year or every hundred hours um, the impeller you're going to want to have done every other year regardless of use and then every 300 hours you're going to want to get into it and change the spark plugs to remove the cowling to access oil filter fuel filter spark plugs you'll pull up on this latch here and then simply just lift up on the cowling not going to get too in depth with the motor today just a couple quick things you can see the fuel filter here um, very easy to access very easy to get to when servicing it you don't do the element inside you do the whole housing itself if you're looking to add oil you'll fill it up here and then if you're looking to check your oil your dip six going to be right here right in front of the uh, oil filter itself so now we're going to go and put the cowling back on um, this is really important to show you how to do it um, you want to have the front of the cowling locked in first before you bring it down, you do not want to have one of these come off going down the road. They're really expensive. So lock the front side in, and then you can bring the back side down and listen for the click of the latch. And then I always take and shake it to make sure it's tight and not going to come off. Moving over to the kicker motor, this is an eight horsepower kicker motor on it. Um, typically, you're not going to see a 1600 Fury have a gas powered kicker, but for the guy that traded this in, um, it worked perfectly for his application. We're going to want to service this the same exact way once a year, or every hundred hours, and do the impeller in the lower unit um, every other year, regardless of use. Uh, we did have a kicker tie bar in, uh, installed so you can steer the kicker up front from the helm when you're steering the 40. If you want to manually steer it with the tiller handle back here, it's on a quick disconnect. You'll slide this back, that'll pop up, and now we can manually steer this. We've already gone through the motors, made sure they're ready to go, fired them up, and they've both been serviced and they're ready for the water. Um, just a quick thing on this motor, you're looking to shift it in and out of gear. Where this is not a Mercury motor, a little different shift assembly, it'll be right here. So if you press it back, you're in reverse, neutral, then back into forward, pull it towards you for forward. Then your emergency kill switch is right here. Press that to shut it off or simply pull on the switch, okay? This is a manual start engine, so no electric start, no charging system equipped on there right now. All right, so now next we're gonna go over the trailer. Um, so the previous customer upgraded the trailer tires on this to have a little bit bigger tires. It's a nice upgrade that he did, I do like that. Um, when you're backing it in the water, I recommend having the front of the fender about three inches below water. That may not be enough to pull the boat off the trailer, but it's gonna be enough that you can lower the motor in, fire it up. You do not wanna ever fire the motor up out of water. So you can lower the motor in, get the gear case underwater, fired up, make sure it's pumping water and all systems are go. Once that's happened, then you can unhook the bow strap, that'll be your final step, and pull it off the water, or off the trailer, into the water, excuse me. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention you don't want to forget is obviously it's got transom straps on the port and starboard side. You'll want to remove these before you back it in the water. 
And then uh, last thing I want to show you on the transom, if you can take a look back here, you'll see uh, three different holes. First one right here is going to be your vent. This is the inlet for the live well, okay? So if for some reason you turn the live well switch on and it's, it's not pumping water in, this can be clogged with debris. Um, it's, I've seen sometimes it have an air void in it. If that's the case, leave the live well pump on and just turn it in reverse and that will purge any air out of there. Um, another thing I'll show you later on in the video is the reason why you may not be experiencing any water in your live well. Moving over, this is going to be the drain for the live well. So that's where the water is going to come back out once you pull the live well plug. And then this here is your transom drain plug, okay? Um, they've got it on a lanyard, so you, you, you know it's easy to remember. You just pop it back in and twist to lock it in. But you do not want to transport down the road with the drain plug in. You'll always want to have this leaved out so we don't transport any invasive species. Just leave that and hang there, okay? Moving over to the bow of the boat, and it's going over the trailer a little bit more. Um, this trailer, he added a secondary safety strap. So this has actually got three bow straps on it. A little overkill, but it's better to have too much than not enough. So this strap here and the chain are gonna be your two safety straps. Remove those before you back it down the ramp. The Once the motor's fired up, everything's ready to go and you're ready to pull it off, the very last step is gonna be to remove the bow wind strap. So to do that, you'll take and lift up to relieve pressure. You got a little switch here, flip that down. And now it's free and ready to unlock. Very simple. And then when you go to put it back on the trailer, flip your latch back up, twist it the lock, and that's good to go. It's got a two inch coupler. This trailer does not have brakes. This size of boat's not necessary. Um, and then you've just got your traditional four way plug in the back for your lights. Okay. Um, when you are hooking this onto your truck, take flip down on the latch and most importantly is going to be your safety pin you want to slide that right through there do not forget that whether you use a safety pin or you go and buy yourself a lock you need to have something going through here so the safety latch can't come up and disengage on the ball and then of course you want to hook up your safety chains we recommend to cross them um, so if anything does happen it did pop off it'll hold it up from hitting the ground now we're going to climb up in the boat go over a few systems inside and then we'll be ready for the water all right, now on the inside of the boat, we're going to start at the bow and work our way back into the cockpit. First thing I want to go over is a Minn Kota trolling motor. So this is a Minn Kota PowerDrive V2 20, or 12 volt system. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is the adjustment shank right here. This is, uh, by adjusting this, it's going to adjust how deep in the water the trolling motor is. Um, I used to tell everybody there's really no reason to have it anywhere um, other than all the way up here. That way it's the deepest in the water. The one exception to that is when you're driving down the road, hauling the boat down the road, or driving down the lake not using the trolling motor you want to have this all the way down at the bottom of the shaft that way it can't accidentally deploy especially going down the road you don't want to have this pop off and drag down the road um, so for today's uh, sake I'm gonna have it about halfway up so we don't hit the trailer or the ground um, so I'm gonna lock it in place right here to deploy it super simple this latch right here you'll take press down and then slide the shaft forward from there and then it'll be locked in place. So right now it's uh, hit the spare tire. I'm gonna bring it up a little bit further. Now it's locked in place and ready to go. You can wiggle here, it's not gonna pull itself back up. Now we need to plug it in for power. Um, this has got a keyed plug, so you cannot put it in wrong. Power port's gonna be located here. Take, put that in. All right, now it's plugged in and we're ready to use. If you wanna check your battery level, you can press the test button right up here on the trolling motor. Shows it's got plenty of battery power. Now this one's gonna be operated by a foot control. Um, so this foot control, very, very simple to use, okay? Um, you've got steering left to right by turning it left or right, okay? Your power level is gonna be on a scale of one to 10. One being the lowest, zero being off, all the way up to 10 for max power. Let me make sure it's not going to hit the side of the boat. Okay. So really quickly, I don't know if you can see it in the video, but right there it says MOM or MOM, that's for momentary. And then if you move it over, I'm going to turn it back to zero so it doesn't turn on. That's continuous. So if you're using it for a trolling motor, you'll most likely have it on continuous. If you're using it for, let's say, bass fishing and just moving around from spot to spot, most guys are going to have it on momentary. If it's on momentary, this button right here is going to be your gas pedal so we'll turn it up to let's say power four for right now that button's going to turn on the power as soon as you let go prop stops if i move the switch back over to uh, continuous now the prop's going to be continuously moving until i shut it off okay 
if you're not using the trolling motor and you feel the need to leave it plugged in always leave it on momentary so you have to press this to get power to go on so it can't just sit there and burn itself up and then turn it to zero also if you're going to leave it plugged in and not use it uh, all right now that we've gone over the trolling motor i want to show you a few things go over the, uh, the rest in the bow uh, so you've got two nice deep storage compartments on port and starboard side and they're actually integrated so they go um, all the way through it's pass through storage you've got the battery up here also for your front trolling motor the previous customer and a lot of our luns uh, come this way um, but he had a battery charger installed so you can just plug this into your wall at home and that's going to keep the battery um, for the trolling motor charged up and ready to roll now we're going to move back a little bit and show you the live well. Um, again, another nice feature with the Furies, it does come with a nice big live well in here. Um, so earlier in the video I mentioned there, uh, there could be a possibility where you've got the live well pump on and I'll show you how to turn that on in a second um, and you're not having water come in. The most likely culprit is going to be the water spigot here. Um, if you turn this all the way clockwise, it'll shut off water flow. So if you didn't want any water to come in here, you wanted to use it for a cooler or some sort of dry storage, you could close this here no water flow would come on but you need to make sure when you turn the pump on um, that this is back and open so that water can flow in and the further counterclockwise you go the bigger that valve opens up and the more water flow you'll get um, to plug the live well you've got a uh, water spigot here so you'll take and this will just thread in you do not need to unthread this to pull it uh, to drain all the water out if you look on it if I pull it back out you'll notice there's a little hole on the side of it that's gonna allow water to drain in through the live well. Now we're gonna go over a few things on the dash. All right, now I'm gonna walk you through the dash. Um, another option this guy had installed uh, before he traded it in was the gauges. So you've got your RPM gauge on your left and your mile per hour gauge on your right. Um, and then he also did install the Helix 7 with sonar. Uh, quick walkthrough on this. Uh, obviously you can see it's our, we've already got it powered up. Uh, a couple things uh, that I've learned. One is going to be the plus and minus buttons right here. That's going to adjust the sensitivity. That's one thing that I'm finding a lot of our uh, you know fish boaters don't realize is you do need to adjust the sensitivity uh, depending on which lakes you're at and how deep they are. Um, so to bring the sensitivity up, you press the plus button. To bring it down, you press the minus button. But that is the one thing that you'll be constantly adjusting while you're out on the water. To change your views, you can change it up here. So you've got sonar, sonar zoom. Over here, we've got the big div digits for the temperature, what time it is, battery voltage, and then how quick we're going. Um, this is going to be the GPS map. Right now, um, you see we're not at the lake. So you zoom in, you can actually see where we're at over at the store. Um, quick overview on that you're gonna want to spend some time on the water going through the fish finder to get a good idea of what you're actually looking at going through the switches on the dash we've got first on the far left we've got your navigation light so if you press this forward the green and red lights uh, will light up if you press it um, the green and red lights will light up and the anchor light and the transom will light up neutral is off and then down is just the anchor light in the rear Next switch over is going to be your bilge pump. This one's on an auto float. So if you ever noticed the red light come on and you didn't flip the switch, that means it's automatically pumping out water, whether it's bad weather outside or some water has been splashed in from waves. If you want to manually turn it on, you just flip that switch up. You see the red light turn on, that's telling you it's on. Um, this switch right here is going to be for your aerator. Again, that's for the live well. So you flip that switch to be able to flood the live well with water. Customer added a few other nice accessories to it. You've got a 12 volt plug here, whether you want to use that to charge your phone or use it for a spotlight. You've got USB ports here to charge your phone as well. And then he went ahead and added this um, voltage gauge so that you flip that. It tells you you've got 12.7 volts. So it's a quick and easy way to tell that, yeah, you've got battery power. Okay. Moving over to the control box a little bit. Very simple to use. You've got your ignition here. Um, it does have the press to choke, but this is an EFI motor. So no need to, there's nothing to choke. Um, simply turn the key to turn it on. If you hear the alarm that tells you one, your run switch is on and two, you've got battery power and ready to fire up. We're not going to fire this up right now in the video because we we're not in the water. Okay. Um, but you do want to make sure one, your emergency run switch is up and two, it's in neutral. It will not start if it's the run switch is down or if it's in gear. To put this boat in gear, there's a little red trigger. You'll take and pull up on that. That'll take you to go to forward gear. Once you're in gear, let go of this trigger. You don't want to squeeze on that because that puts you in jeopardy of accidentally going from forward all the way to reverse without stopping in neutral. And that's not, that's something you want to do when you're on the water, especially is always stop in neutral before you go from forward to reverse or reverse to forward. Uh, one other thing I want to show you on the bow that I forgot to talk about on the trolling motor specifically is how to retract it once it's been deployed. 
Um, very simple to do. I just want to make sure you know how to do it. To retract it, you got this lever here. Press that down. Then you can grab the trolling motor shaft and take and lock it in place. We'll see a lot of guys store the trolling motor like this, vertical. You want it horizontally placed and pull it back to lock it in. Give it a good pull to make sure it's set in place. And then remember, move this shank all the way forward. All right, now moving back to show you a few more features in the cockpit. Um, really, the last things I want to show you is both port and starboard side. You've got great amount of storage. You've got uh, right now we've got our navigation light and our anchor light, but you can see plenty of storage for rods on this side. And you've got the same thing, just a little shorter on the starboard side. So great for additional storage, whether you're using it for tackle storage or rod storage, it's nice. They, they utilize every part of this boat for storage or accessories. So that gives you a good idea of the 1600 Fury and hope you have fun on the water. Thanks.